drawing breath today, knowing finally they will now be living without Queen Elizabeth. The late monarch now lies in the family vault at Windsor Castle after a momentous service of grandeur and tradition at Westminster Abbey. Then her passage through great avenues of people lining the streets. Damien Ryan begins our coverage. On the red tunic shoulders of those who performed a final service to their queen. Elizabeth's coffin began its short but majestic journey to the Abbey from Westminster Hall where she'd been lying in state. Navy sailors towed and guided the gun carriage bearing her casket. More royalty in her shadows and the world watching on. Waiting for her, representatives from every corner. Kings, queens, presidents, prime ministers and a pair of her great-grandchildren. If we witness for 10 days, every moment unfold with the ceremonies and rituals, this was finally how the life and times of Queen Elizabeth II we'll were truly celebrated, commemorated, and mourned. The late monarch was carried down the great central aisle of Westminster Abbey. And her family fell into line. Three generations of the House of Windsor led by the King and his Queen Consort. Princess Anne, Prince Edward, Harry, William and Kate and their children, nine-year-old George and seven-year-old Charlotte, who wore a horseshoe brooch, a present from her gangan. The pair so tiny in a momentous setting, but second and third in line, a daunting initiation to the global glare of life in the monarchy. The casket placed in the Abbey Centre, the beating heart of the church she led. Her crown borne on top with flowers, rosemary for remembrance, myrtle, a symbol for a happy marriage, English oak symbolising a strength of love, and a card bearing the simple words from her son. In loving and devoted memory, Charles R. And then the service began. Here, where Queen Elizabeth was married and crowned. Prayers for a mother of a family and a country. Her late majesty's broadcast during COVID lockdown ended with, we will meet again. Service in life, hope in death. All who follow the Queen's example and inspiration of trust and faith in God can with her say, we will meet again. 2,000 in the Abbey and outside millions without titles or palaces, but with a love for the only monarch most have ever known. The prayers, the hymns, all signed off by the Queen. And Meghan and Harry, this time singing from the same songbook as the rest of the family. As the hour-long vigil neared its end, a last post trumpeted a moment of respect. Two minutes of silence.
and once more the country stood still. It was broken by the Queen's personal piper. A traditional lament, sleep deary sleep. And then a rendition of a reworked national anthem, a stirring symbol of the changing of the guard. Crowds in the street outside, hearing it all, wrapped in their own reflections. The service over, a band of soldiers who only weeks ago were serving in Iraq dutifully stepped up to carry her coffin. It was time to return the Queen to her people. Australian and New Zealand troops, an Anzac contingent. As Big Ben sounded every minute along the way. The funeral procession passed all the old familiar places of the Queen's life. The streets of London, its pavements packed past the Houses of Parliament. The passing of a queen and the making of a king, an inevitable transition, but never an easy one. Her Majesty, the longest serving and most admired monarch in history, a constant in these people's lives, and they're struggling to let go. Very emotional and a historic day that we will never see again. At the end of an era, and we were lucky to be here, and I was actually at the crowning as well, the coronation. I was six. On the Mall, the Great Flag Boulevard, there was not a murmur, just emotions. as a young prince and princess remain front and centre with their mother and Camilla by their side. For the Queen, her lap of honour took her past Buckingham Palace one last time. It's where in 1927, as a one-year-old, she appeared on the balcony. The parade stretched a mile as the new monarch and sons and the rest of the family slow marched to the beat of the drum. A long walk to the final stop, the Queen's gun carriage passing through Wellington Arch. A ceremonial occasion but still very much a family affair. Her Majesty back on the arms of her guardsmen. From carriage to state hearse. The last leg of her journey to her final resting place in Windsor.
In London, Damien Ryan, Nine News. For every person inside the Abbey, there were a thousand outside, claiming with the silent power of affection and reflection their own monumental part in the day. Nine's Euro correspondent Carrie Ann Greenbank was amongst them. As she did in life, so too in death. Queen Elizabeth unifying the masses as hundreds of thousands of mourners lined London roadsides waiting for this. A personal heartfelt moment, the briefest of goodbyes as the crowds caught a glimpse of the Queen's coffin passing them by. It was very emotional and it's lovely to see a whole nation come together in the world really. For many, the funeral of the only monarch they've known was cause for silent contemplation, a deep hush descending on the Mall at Hyde Park. But there was a growing sense of anticipation too, a buzz of excitement, that children, like 10-month-old Harrison, were witnessing history unfold in front of them before they read about it in books. We just wanted Harrison to be here so that he can say when he's older to his children, I was there at the Queen's funeral. I'm uh, just excited, excited to be part of um, a massive bit of history, so I'm excited for her to be involved in it as well. When she's learning about it in school, I think it's going to be quite cool for her to be able to say she was here and she was part of it. Eight-year-old Freya, perhaps more affected than most, saying the Queen reminded her of her grandma. When the news broke, she just sat there and cried for hours and hours. And today, she, it was her that wanted to come. I've got to be here, Mum. I've got to be at the front. But securing front row seats required dedication. We've been here for 12 hours now. Um, it's been an amazing experience. One in a lifetime opportunity, really. You're never going to see it again. She's the longest reigning queen. The crowd crush in London so dense that by midday it could be seen by satellites. Public viewing areas soon hit capacity, sparking a last-minute dash through the city. But it was too late for some. I'm all emotional because my family are down there and I'm not. Mum of one, Beth, left distraught, unable to reach her husband and daughter outside Buckingham Palace. I just got down here a bit late. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> so I just stuck watching it on my own. <laughs> watching on her own, but surrounded by others doing the same thing, toasting Her Majesty in pubs after being turned away from public viewing sites. No better place to watch it if it can't be in person to, than a British pub. It's the final realisation that she's actually gone. While millions of others watch on from around the world, for those here lining the mall, the countless hours waiting for this moment to unfold were worth it. They're just metres away from history unfolding. It's amazing. I mean, that's why I'm here. I want to, I want to be able to say when, when this is shown, I was there. And I was at Diana's funeral, actually, just across there. Uh, you can watch it on TV for sure and probably get a better view, but being around everyone and this momentous occasion makes everything worthwhile. The day declared a national bank holiday to allow as many people as possible to take part and offer their final private tribute to their Queen. It's just our Queen, like she know, you know, she's the best. In London, Carrie Ann Greenbank, Nine News. From the centre of London, the funeral procession set out for Windsor Castle and the Grand Avenue, known as the Long Walk, was lined with members of the public. Their mood was punctuated by intense silence one moment, as well as clapping and gentle cheering as the Queen's coffin passed by. London's last goodbye. At Hyde Park, they crammed in for one last cheer. The journey had barely begun, but a sign of things to come. The route to Windsor lined by roses. A brilliant sunny day, past the gilded monuments to Royals past, more than 20 deep, with phones held high for a shot of history. White terraces in Kensington emptied to line the procession. 
Through Hammersmith, every vantage point taken. It seemed like 9 million Londoners had showed up for this roadside commemoration. By the time the hearse reached the outskirts of Windsor, it was adorned with flowers. And here, no crowds. Instead, on a quiet country back road, boots in lockstep, a stunning escort by Grenadier guards. It was a river of polished brass, bearskin hats and red tunics, all there to shepherd the Queen's coffin down the entranceway to Windsor Castle, what's called the Long Walk. We got here at 11 o'clock last night. Um, we decided to camp just because we didn't really want to miss it. It's part of history, never going to do it again. I'm representing my family in Australia who love the Queen, they can't be here. We love the Queen so much. I was very emotional when she passed away, I cried a lot. The Abbey had the pageantry, the heads of state, but at Windsor, the people had taken back their Queen in extraordinary numbers. Very emotional. Um, we, we only live about 15 minutes from here, so uh, it's, we needed to be um, definitely in Windsor today. It's just really special to be here, and it's great to see Her Majesty come home. I think it's wonderful that she's resting here with Philip, the true love story, the lovely ending for them. And so this long journey starts to near the finish. The Queen loved Windsor, and in turn, Windsor loves her. This their final chance to show their appreciation for their Queen, and neighbour. That long journey starting in Balmoral had come to this. Two years ago, the Queen escaped the pandemic for Windsor Castle and on the approach, her favourite pony, Emma. With the whole world watching, she was at last back within its 1,000 year old walls. And they're waiting her two corgis, Mick and Sandy, given to her last year when Prince Philip died. Close by, the senior royals and the king, lost in thought, the colour drained from his face, the toll of 10 days of mourning. After days of marching, of keeping vigil, the royals were taking their last steps behind the queen. towards St George's Chapel within the castle grounds. Oh. Up the steps, the Queen in the safest of hands. Eight Grenadier guards. Compared to the Abbey, this was an almost intimate ceremony. Inside, her family and staff members from her various estates. Last year, the Queen was pictured in the chapel, alone, at the funeral of Prince Philip. For her farewell, alone no longer. We have come together to commit into the hands of God the soul of his servant, Queen Elizabeth. A final hymn from the King, Queen Consort, Anne and Edward. And opposite, the two brothers, three seats apart. At her coronation 70 years ago, the Queen was handed the orb and scepter representing the power of God. It was left to the crown jeweller to carefully remove them from the coffin. Then he lifted the imperial state crown that she wore every year at the opening of parliament. Symbols of the monarchy that will transfer to Charles at his coronation. It fell to the king to place the colors of the grenadier guards onto the coffin. And then the most senior official in the royal household, Lord Chamberlain, broke his wand of office, symbolising the end of the Queen's reign. Moments later, the Queen's coffin was lowered directly into the royal vault. And later, she was buried in a private service alongside Prince Philip. And bringing it all to an end, a special touch, a personal request from the Queen. The piper who woke the Queen every morning playing below her window at Balmoral a lament for his sovereign one last time.
In Windsor, Brett McLeod, Nine News. Our reporters, Damien Ryan and Karianne Greenbank, join me now. First to you, Damien. The pomp, the pageantry, it's over, and I think the royal family can finally grieve privately. Yeah, exactly, Pete. One of the first acts is King Charles issued a decree that there would be seven days of mourning after the funeral. It will allow the family to step back as they're not expected to engage in any official duties during that time. And Pete, on social media, one last fond farewell from the Prince and Princess of Wales, posting a black and white photo of the Queen's casket and a simple message, goodbye. Pete. Damien, thank you. We'll leave you there. We'll go to Nine's Europe correspondent, Curry Ann Greenbank. Now, Curry, for the past 24 hours, the world's eyes have been right here on London. Well, they have, Pete. There are early estimates that billions of people have tuned in to watch the Queen's funeral from around the world, making it easily one of the most watched television events in history. It may also have broken records, but we are still waiting on official figures to confirm that. What we do know, though, is that in Australia, five million people watched the service on TV. That's one in five Australians. And here in London, there was this real recognition from the crowds here that this was the last time they would ever see Her Majesty. In 1965, when Sir Winston Churchill had his uh, state funeral, a million people took to the streets of London for that. Early estimates now are that more than a million people have streamed to the streets of London and surrounds for the Queen's funeral, for the public that was here lighting the mail not, not that long ago, Pete. It was their chance to say their own personal goodbye to Her Majesty. All right, Curry, thank you so much. And that's all from me in London. It's been an extraordinary week and a privilege for all of us on the Nine team to bring you the build-up and then the funeral of Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. So, on that note, from Buckingham Palace...